Hi everyone, Sandra Duran Wilson here, and welcome to this week's Mixed Media Soul Sparks. I'm going to be continuing where we left off last week with my favorite tools, and I'm going to be showing you how I use some of these tools in blending. And we'll, we'll be able to get through parts of it, but uh, I'll be giving you notes for things that I might run out of time because things have to dry before you can continue. But the first thing I want to touch on is your color selection and your color mood. Now I've got two pieces here. These are just some backgrounds I was just mixing some paint on, looking at these reds, these hot colors, next to cool colors. This turquoise down here, very different mood than if you've got predominantly cool colors with just a touch of hot colors, a very different feel. I'll be addressing also the uh, opacity. Here's an opaque paint next to a transparent paint. So these are all factors that you're looking at in your finished painting. But what I really want to show you is about how to get some of these different blending techniques. One of my favorite tools to use for choosing colors is this color wheel. It's by the Color Wheel Company. And you can see all of around the color wheel. So what would happen if you add these different colors? However, on this flip side, you can begin to find out about split complementaries, tertiary colors, and it gives you all of this information here. So I, you know, I really recommend getting a, a color wheel like this that you can really learn because it takes time to just do this. For me, color is about a feeling. So when I first started to set this up, I was going to do some really hot colors. And then I decided I wanted to do more of a analogous colors, analogous being the ones that are adjacent on the color wheel. So some blues and greens and yellows, and then to add a pop of a warm color. So that's what I'm going to go with. Originally, I had kind of put out some different colors, looking at the, the reds and, and the yellows. And now this is looking more like what I want to do. And I'll put in the notes all the colors that I use. But first, I want to show you another little idea that I've used. And I'll just throw that away. What the heck? I've just gone over the, the plastic that's on my panel, and I've kind of like thought, okay, well, maybe I'll do this shape here and this shape over there, and kind of gives me an idea of where my lights and my darks might be. And this is a gesso board, a 16 by 20 gesso board from Ampersand. But any surface you want to work on will work. Now, I say that, but each surface is going to have its own qualities, meaning, um, the gesso board is nice and absorbent, but if you're working on, on a canvas, um, it's going to have a different surface than, well, I'm not sure why this is stuck on here. Let me have to change. Uh, ah, there we go. Problem solved. Now, remember before I said I, I hang on to this because it's another great way to blend. This is the plastic that came off of the, the surface or the panel. And let me just put that over there and get my deli sheets. So let's get a bit of a palette going on here. First, I'm going to mix this whole surface with some water. And then I'm going to put out some blues and greens. Payne's gray. So I'm going to get out my other blues. Green. This white is an opaque white by Holbein. And it's 
kind of a between a heavy body and a soft body. And this is a Southern Ocean Blue. I really like this. It's kind of a blue green, similar to a phthalo turquoise. What else did I have on here? Well, I'll get started with these, and then I need to grab some other yellows. So the first thing I want to do is just get my knife on here and put some of these next to each other. And do what I just said about the blending. Now here's my silicone tool, and I'm just going to start to move the paint. It's another similar tool to silicone, but it's a little more rigid. brush. Get a little water on here. And here I'm just going to add more white. So you can start to get a nice soft blend. Here. This is another product. It's a glazing medium. And what that does is it actually keeps your paint open longer. And it is, there's the white. It's, good, it's white when it's wet, but it will dry clear. And I'll show you what you can do with this. I'm just going to kind of mix it into there. And it just gives me more blending time, more blending ability. So if you're working from a light to a dark, I would suggest starting at the light end, and then you start to blend this. And you see how you can start to get this nice gradation. Water. So I can start out with that great movement using the other tools, but the difference with using this large brush really gives us a nice smooth surface, no brush marks. Let's see if I introduce a little green into here. See how that glazing medium kind of just keeps it really kind of wet and blendable. Special term there. Now what happens if I come in with a little bit of the alcohol? It's a little too dry. So you can always spray some more water on. And let's come back in here with, let's try this different tool fan brush. Or no, I know what I want to use. I'm going to use my roller, my brayer. And because I had that water on there, it's giving me this very interesting effect. It's almost like it's picking the paint up where the um, water was sitting on that surface. You see how each tool blends differently. Now here, the fan brush works nicely. I'm just gonna grab some more. Here, let's get this yellow. I just get, you know, I need a couple of extra hands here. <laughs> Sometimes I just like to mix my colors directly 
on the uh, panel, as I'm doing here. Okay. I might get my knife. That's a really wild yellow, very bright. So this is, these are just my background colors, and I know I'm going to be toning these down. But here's where the, the deli sheet can sometimes come in very, very handy. And I'm going to pick this up and start to move the color around. So in a way, this is blending, but you're not blending the two colors together. I'm overlapping, I'm layering, which is another type of blending. Here I can begin to pick some of this color up rather than adding it. I'm going to have to let this dry, and then I'm going to come back in and put the next layers on. So that's probably one of the most important things to do is to let things dry in between. Otherwise, you'll end up having mud. So let me get this dry, and I'll be right back. So I've wiped off some of the paint, and I was drying this. But I want to show you something. So I'm just putting some water drops on here. And I'm going to come back in. Let it sit for a minute. It's going to kind of rehydrate this paint because most of the paint is dry. But now, you see those dots over there? Let's see if we can start to get something like that happening again. Yeah, here we go. So this is all about working with the viscosity of the paint and the drying time. So some of the paint is, is very dry, some of it is still wet, so you can see where I can start to remove some of the paint. Now I want to come in with some different colors. This is a different Holbein white, and it's a fluid paint. And I'm going to bring this in right onto there, and some of this Naples yellow over here. And then I want to show you how I'm going to push some of this back, this brightness of this yellow, using a transparent brown. Okay. And again, I'm going to be using some water. And the tool just going to be using this brush. And you see how that transparent brown just really pushes that bright, bright yellow back. And over here, because I've got the opaque white in with the yellow, I'm going to start to bring some of that in using this larger brush. And then I can bring I wanted to show you this tool. Remember I said last week, you can come in and get these interesting shapes like that. That's going with it this way. Now here, it's almost like the opposite. That's a really thin line. Here's a really wide one. I'll do it again for you. Let's just get this on here. You see, I'm just really scrubbing this brush into the surface. So this way, it's going to make a, a thin line. And here, well, actually, it looks about the same that way. There we go. All right. So this is just going to be another layer. As I'm creating these layers, just little bits and pieces of them are going to be popping up. One other thing I wanted to show you is optical mixing. When you have this bright blue, and if I would have put this yellow on top, it would have been a really, really bright green. But now that that particular layer is dry, and I can just come in here. Let's use this brayer again. 
it's going to keep it more yellow rather than mixing with that blue. I want to show you what happens with this color when I add some of the glazing medium to this. Because with the brayer, it's going to really help to smooth it and And as I get less paint on this brayer, I can just really start to blend it down into this color in here. So in blending, it's about putting it on, spreading it, but it's also about taking it off. And you can begin to remove some, even with these sponges. And this is another great way to blend. So when I get more of that paint off, you can see that it's getting much smoother down here. And now I want to tone that back. So I'm going to come back in with some of this transparent brown. Now this is still wet, so it's going to mix it a bit. And we'll try this. We'll see what happens. There we go. A little more out here. There we go. Okay. Now you can see it. I wanted to get this uh, change in color so you could really see what this brayer is doing. So even though I start with these really bright colors, it's very easy to integrate them and push them back. This is alcohol. Add a little, there we go. I wanted some bigger drops. I'm even going to come back in with this tool. And this is another little silicone tool that I can begin to remove those layers. So as things dry and you build them up, then I might come back in. This is still wet, but I'm just going to show you. I probably come back in with this opaque paint. This is a Holbein blue, and it is going to cover this area up because of the opacity. Let's get this other one in here. So this blue is pretty transparent. And you see what happens when I mix that? I get that really intense green. I don't know if I like that green so much. It's just, let's pull it back a little. Now, I'll come back in with this blue, which is opaque, and I'm using my knife, dragging it. See the angle I'm holding this? It's pretty flat. And I'm able to get what's called broken color. And I'm picking up a little bit of white on my knife as well. And here as I drag it, I start to get this broken color. And because this brown is still a little wet, it's starting to blend some. Now this is going to give me a little different feeling than with the brayer because I can break it up more. Here I'm blending, here I'm getting more broken color. And that has to do with the amount of paint that I have on the brush. You see where it got mixed there? Okay. Now if I wanted to tone something back even more, this is a sepia. It's a darker brown, not as transparent, even though this is a high flow color. Let me just come in with this brush. But it's mixing in with that white that's still wet. So what's going to happen if I take it in over here? Let's 
it's really going to push it back. And over here, where it's going to get a little water, because this is very dry, I just want to show you more of this blending. There we go. So here, it's going to give me more of a pushing that blue back. See, I start with the with the really bright colors, and I start to blend things, and then pull it back, add more layers. Even over here, I can come back in. This is the transparent brown, and I can still push this back. So if I can find a halfway clean brush. There we go. It's all about building it up in layers. And I'm going to push this back where I just put that blue, start to blend it. And you see I'm starting to get these beautiful kind of gradations just with the brush. Even over here, rather than having it so perfect, I'm breaking it up. So these are all ways to blend using knives, brushes, sponges, brayers, and there's just so many more tools. I'm going to let this dry, and then I will be adding more layers to it. And in the notes, I'll tell you exactly what I did. I'll take a few photographs of it at different stages and show you how these layers are built up. So working with blending does take some time. Make sure you allow that time for, for the paint to dry before you try and add the next layer. That's the most important step that I can give you. All right, see you next week. Thanks for joining me. Join the Creative Awakening community on Facebook, where you'll be able to post your art, connect with other creatives around the world, and ask questions. Use the hashtag Mixed Media Soul Sparks when posting your work on social media. Thanks for joining me, and I'll see you next week.